I'm Dr. Roy Herbst. I'm the Chief of Medical Oncology at the Yale Cancer Center, and I'm here at ASCO this year to discuss uh, a number of exciting studies. Um, my area of interest is lung cancer, and certainly, um, as is usually the case, we have several studies um, uh, on lung cancer which I think will have an impact on treatment in the next few years. I think, in, in my opinion, the most exciting uh, data are being presented regarding uh, the antibodies that target PD-1 or PD-1 ligand, targeting either the T cell uh, or the tumor cell uh, to um, uh, disinhibit the immune system to allow it to attack lung t tumors. We heard um, already at the meeting um, uh, this morning uh, about um, uh, a drug, PD-1 uh, antibody from Bristol-Myers. It actually has a very nice activity in lung cancer, renal cancer, and melanoma. I was particularly struck by the fact that in lung cancer, response rates are being seen on the order of 20 percent. While it's still early and there are no progression-free or overall survival data, I think the fact that patients with no known uh, driver pathway for whom they can receive a targeted therapy are now being treated with agents like this and seeing response certainly bodes well for the future research in this area. Uh, you can only imagine how uh, well patients will do if markers are identified, and actually there was, there was some hint of that because it looks like if patients don't have the PD-1 uh, ligand uh, on their tumor cells, the chance of activity is quite low. So this is quite exciting, and I think the entire lung cancer community is buzzing about ways to further study this class of agents, either alone or in combination with either chemotherapy or targeted agents. The other study which I think is quite interesting at ASCO is one um, from Dr. Pasi Johnny and, and uh, colleagues, uh, which is looking to target uh, KRAS. We certainly know that lung cancer is a disease um, where about 30 percent of the time, mostly in adenocarcinoma, patients will have KRAS mutated. When the KRAS is driving the tumor, it's very difficult to treat that tumor with either chemotherapy or targeted therapies. There has been some indication that combinations of targeted therapies uh, might play a role in this, uh, in this uh, 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 setting, but those studies are still underway. There is a study uh, where a drug AZD6244, a MEK inhibitor, was combined with docetaxel compared with docetaxel alone, and at least the early data suggest a, prog a progression-free survival benefit for the combination. This is exciting because it suggests that there might be some role now for looking at these MEK inhibitors, either alone or with chemotherapy, uh, in the treatment of KRAS-activated lung cancer. And finally, there's no specific study that I would point to, but I think the buzz here at ASCO is around genomics and the idea that we now can sequence lung cancers, whether they be adenocarcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma, tumors of the lung, or even small cell lung cancer. And I'm particularly um, interested in some of the uh, studies that are looking at sequencing squamous cell lung cancer, identifying new targets, for example, fibroblast growth factor receptor 1, gene amplifications, to name a few. So it really is exciting that now we are beginning to see that sequence data is making it into the main, main sessions, the, the lung sessions, the plenary sessions, and I think very soon we will be using these data routinely um, in a CLIA certified setting to um, treat patients on clinical trial and certainly uh, someday in common practice.